So you guys know that transitions are one of the most important components when it comes to a finalized YouTube video, but the main problem is a lot of editors and YouTubers don't actually know how to do it themselves. So they end up just using some presets, but I think that it's pretty important that you learn how to actually create them. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can make your very own transitions from start to finish in DaVinci Resolve. If you guys have no experience in DaVinci, it's great, it's free, it's easy to use, and I'm gonna be showing you the basics of transitions in it today. But if you guys do enjoy, you learn something, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get right into the video. All right, guys. So basically all we have to do to start off is actually download DaVinci Resolve and this can be done by going over to DaVinci's website or navigate on over to the link that I have at the top of the description. So go here to DaVinci Resolve 18. And for some reason, the DaVinci Resolve website's down right now, but by the time this video gets posted, it will be back up. Just go check out the link. I already have it downloaded, lucky for me. And now we're just gonna click in the DaVinci Resolve icon right here, get it booted up, and I'll see you guys once it's ready. Okay, so quickly before the tutorial starts, I wanna quickly mention my editing packs that I have available right now. Basically, I have two different tiers of editing pack. We have my $5 editing pack, which is for beginners that only wanna spend $5. It's super budget friendly and it has literally every Everything you could ever need for Fortnite montages, content, any other gaming montages, etc. There's a ton of motion graphics in there, subtitle presets, Fortnite presets. I'm gonna leave you guys a link for that. But if you guys didn't see, I just recently released my 2024 editing pack, which is basically that pack, but updated. I have so much more content related stuff. So if you are a YouTuber and upcoming content creator, you definitely need to check that pack out. One's $5, one's $10. If you did buy my previous pack and you enjoyed it, I definitely recommend that you take the next step and buy the $10 pack. It's so worth it, but I don't want to go on any longer. If you guys want to check out the announcement video where I go over everything in the pack, be sure to go check that out. That'll be at the top of the description. Links to both packs are going to be at the top of the description as well. Let's get right into the tutorial. Okay. So when it comes to DaVinci Resolve, when it first gets booted up, all we have to go here is new project transition sample, for example, let me just go like this. And all we have to do is go here to the edit tab, which is the third tab at the bottom here. This is what we're going to be doing all of our transition work inside of go here to file project settings, go time my frame rate and change it to 60 as well as just keep our resolution 1920 by 1080. So now what we have to do is we have to get two different types of frames to make the transition obvious. Uh, if you're editing your own YouTube video, you'll have some sort of transition from like one scene to another or you talking to you kind of being like face cam or gameplay or something like that. I'm going to drag in a clip right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in another clip of me talking kind of in a different location. So we can see just based off of these two videos, we have two different settings. We have this one, we have this one. So they're pretty noticeable frame changes. So this should be super easy to execute when it comes to our transitions. Now, when we actually have our project file laid out, like let's imagine we have our final video here, but we're going to focus on a small segment that we're actually going to be transitioning through. So we can see that we have me sitting down at my desk, kind of like I am right now, um, waiting to talk. And then we also have me in front of my desk. So two very different scenes. It's going to be visually easy to tell the difference, um, but let's just pretend in the video, these are two different scenes to be talking. So like we can see, if we actually press play, we can see there are two very different scenes right here in terms of, you know, visuals. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like in a video, we don't want it to be, you know, cut one from the next. So what we're going to do is we're going to transition between the two. So I might be able to even cut them down just for the sake of the video a little bit more. So we got this little gap right here. So this is the point we're going to be focusing on. We're actually going to press M on our keyboard to add a marker. Um, that's going to allow us to easily refer to this point without having, you know, scroll through all that stuff. And the first thing we're going to do, your DaVinci Resolve might look like this. Just click on effects, click on media pool. And we're going to go here to effects in media. We're going to go to effects in the effect library, drag on adjustment clip, and we're going to size it down just so it looks something like this. So it's going to last about a second before and about a second after, which should be more than enough time to actually pull up a transition. So we're going to go here into the fusion tab, press control space on your keyboard at the same time and just press transform. So this one right here, press add, and this will add it to this little timeline right here, meaning the transition and the effect is actually applied to the clip itself. If it were to be outside like this, no matter what we change, it's not actually going to apply it to see we can change the settings. It's not going to do anything, but once we add it, it will actually apply, you know, that effect. So we got to make sure that it's attached to this line right here. Like you guys can't see. So starting off, what we're going to do is we're going to go to that middle point. We're going to go back to the fusion tab and we can see that that point is actually right here. So frame number 76 is indicated as this, at this counter right here. So there are three different types of transitions. There's zooms, position, and rotation. I'm going to be showing you position and zoom, and then rotation is the same process. You guys should be able to figure that out. So size, for example, which is going to be zoom. Let's do a zoom in first. So in order for a transition to zoom in, obviously it has to move towards 
towards a greater value once it gets towards that center. So what we're going to do is being this separation right here, we're going to come to the frame before where we have the marker. We're going to keyframe on a value that's zoomed in. So one point, let's say 1.4. Okay. Now, in order, if we were to kind of inverse that value as we zoom in, obviously, as that next frame comes in, it's going to be a little bit zoomed out. So we're going to go to that first frame, the middle point. We're going to change this to something a little zoomed out 0.6, let's say, which is the opposite. So if we add 0.4 to zoom it in, we'll subtract 0.4 from one, if that makes sense. One being the default value. So we go 0.4 on the left, 0.4 on the right, if that makes sense. And obviously we're going to change edges to mirror because without it, it's just going to be black. We don't want you know black edges because it just looks weird. So we can see the frame counter being 76. Typically a good rule of thumb is 15 to 20 frames. So just being easy, 20 frames would be 96. Coming here, we just change the value back to one. And then obviously subtracting 20 frames would be 55 right here, changing this value to one. So we can see if we press play, it'll do a very slow, progressive, linear zoom. It doesn't really look the best. So that's where the spline comes in. We're going to be smoothing it all up and it's going to be a lot more natural looking like the transitions you'll see in YouTube videos. So spline, go here to transform. We can see if we press this little zoomy thing, we got a graph looking like this. So to make everything easy, we're going to just press control A, S, and that'll make Make everything be able to be manipulated in here right here so we're just gonna go like this and while pressing shift on our keyboard we're just gonna drag this over and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this one down we're gonna drag this one up just like that and we're gonna drag this one over as well and that'll make the graph look something like this a nice progressive zoom in it kind of whips it through and if we want it to be less harsh we can do something like this so obviously the more frames that you have the more progressive and slower the zoom in will be um, so you guys can adjust the frames if you want you can make it 10 frames 15 frames 12 frames literally doesn't matter just try to make it even on either side that's just kind of my recommendation um, but yeah that is a zoom transition now let me just get rid of this one now let me show you how you can use blur mode curves now so for example just do the same thing control space add blur mode curves and we're gonna drag this in here blur mode curves is my favorite by far I would highly use that recommend using that not um, you know transform if you can transform is free it comes with DaVinci um, but showing you guys how to do transitions um, position wise now so we're gonna do X transitions Y is the same process go to 76 and 75 add a keyframe to shift X and shift Y starting off we're going to make our value on 76.5 and then on the left side we're gonna make it negative 0.5 and then 15 frames before, which would be 60, we're gonna make it zero. And then 15 frames after, which would be 91, we're gonna make this zero as well. So it'll look like this, swipe over, we're gonna wrap these two. Super easy again, we're gonna go into spline. We're gonna graph edit the exact same graph basically that we had before. So something like this should be good. And once we have that down, we are basically set and good to go. So just like that, swipe, boom. See how blur mode curves has a little bit of a blur versus transitions doesn't uh, transform. Sorry, not transitions. That's a big pro of blur mode curves in itself. And zooms are the exact same thing. I'm gonna have some presets down below that you guys can look at the settings for. I don't recommend using them because I want you guys to be able to make your own transitions and presets. So make sure you go do that if you want to refer to them for settings or even just use them as presets you can. I'll have those in the description though for you guys to use for 100% free. But if you guys did enjoy the video, you learned something, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. With that being said, we're super close to 100,000 subscribers and I think 75% of you guys that still watch my videos are not subscribed yet. Do so, it helps me out a ton, but I will see you guys in a future video on the channel and yeah, peace out.